Yo, what up, chat? Hi. What's up, Calface dude? What's up, Pick? Hi. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah stream after dark. Oh, yeah, Toto's behind me as well. Everybody say hi to Toto. <laughs> Yo, Akira, what's up, dude? Thank you for the holy shit, man. 41 months. That's crazy. Dude, thank you for the 41 months, brother. Yo, Jono, what's up? How's it going, man? Akira, I hope you're doing well. Pick is you too. I hope you're doing well. Cowface, dude. Jono, I hope you're doing well. Yo, uh, Retro, what's up, man? How's it going? Welcome, everybody. You guys might be like, yo, what is what is BG doing live at 7 o'clock at night? Well, guess what, chat? And Cowface, dude, I think you'll be pretty hyped to hear this too. Akira, all of our EUers. This is a new time, a new time slot. Um, I, I talked about this a bit on Monday. Um, the gist of it is, 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 uh, you know, most of the people at my company now know that I stream, um, all awesome supporters of the stream. And, uh, my manager basically came up to me and was like, Hey, you know, I think we should probably just set times, you know, like set times that you're going to stream i'll know you know and we'll just you know like that's how we'll move forward with this um i was like really i was like you're telling me i can just basically say like these are the times of the week for my job i want to be able to stream because I, I like i i really tried to up until now two years of working at the company almost uh, i've really been just trying to balance it the best i can um and if you guys if you guys feel you know like this is similar you know uh uh you you know you want to work on side projects but you also have your day job and that's taking a ton of your time you know i think it's important for your companies to know about those things yo orca what's up dude how's it going for the 23 months oh my god we got a hype train dude thank you for the almost two years bro two years that's crazy it's crazy to think we've worked together we've hung out together so much has happened within that time all 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 through twitch man crazy thank you for the 23 months orca um so yeah no uh the 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 gist of it is 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 um so there was a trade-off there was a trade-off basically uh the trade-off was that um i could only stream two days a week in the mornings uh three days was tough to sell i'm getting a lot more responsibility at hippo um i'm working towards again becoming a principal engineer and doing these other things and i just have like honestly people like just have a higher level expectation of me now which is crazy like like if i met like if you know those scenarios we go like yeah i'll just take care of it later like i can't do that anymore uh it, like it, if i if i find myself in that kind of situation and somebody catches me it's like ah! i'm like oh god okay sorry geez um i guess somebody's got to make an example so anyways yeah two days out of the week um, and I talked to a Toto about it a bit and I was like, well, what two days are the most important ones? And one of them already, my manager and I were talking about, and, um, they were, you know, they were like Friday for sure. Like Friday's no problem. You can easily, you know, stream Fridays. That's not that big of a deal. Um, and I was like, well, what's the other day that I really think is important to stream? And I think for me and for us, I think it's Mondays. I think everybody's hyped to come back. You know mondays we're all excited to at least be able to like you know throw on a stream and so i was like all right well let's do that let's do mondays and fridays i'll be live in the mornings and then i went to a tota and i was like well you know i want to stream one more day at least like i want to get one like i like streaming three days a week i like i like that relatively you know that relativeness is ellie still there yeah ellie's still there um and uh I was like, well, I was like, well, what about like, you know, nighttime or actually, no, I think a Toto mentioned it. it was like, what about nighttime? And I was like, well, okay, I'm not against that. But like, what time do you know, what do we think would be best? And yeah, Wednesday just kind of made sense. Um, a Toto is going to be streaming tomorrow, Thursday. He's got a new time slot as well. He's going to be streaming Thursday nights, which is pretty hype. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing Wednesday nights. So basically chat the stream like the the official stream schedule now going forward which is like locked in with my company and you know uh, tota and everybody um is going to be monday mornings wednesday nights thursday nights friday mornings and then saturday mornings as well so yeah i'm hyped i'm excited it took a I, it took a while longer than i wanted to i think to get the the schedule down but 
you know, again, I wasn't really expecting my work to be like, just tell us what you want, <laughs> you know, so we can, we can make everybody happy. And I was like, all right, well, yeah, we'll make an example of people. Yeah, exactly. Yo, what's up, Denzel? How's it going, buddy? Yo, C and Horn. What's up, dude? How's it going, buddy? How are you? How is life? How is everything? Thank you for the 13 months, man. Um, I have a kitty down here, by the way, Chad. If you see me like lean over. Oh my God. See, this is why I have to stream late night more, just so I can get a curious gift. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Akira, dude, thank you so much for the five gifted subbies, man. Addison, Buddha Ray, call, 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 call member, call mem, call meme, me, me, be me, whatever. Uh, praise us and uh, Pika Gamer, dude, thank you. Uh, and be sure to thank your gifted subber. Akira, dude, thank you so much, Akira. It's good to see you, man. You're the only person I let you call me, or I let call me BG Squeegee. <laughs> Oh, CN Hort, dude, thank you for the, the gifted, the tier two, dude. What the, what the, <laughs> what, why a tier two? That's so much more. <laughs> thank you so much, dude, for the tier two sub to Latchor. Good to see you too, man. MBD dealer, dude, thank you for the, 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 the two month, the, the two month resub as well. Oh my gosh. Where the, where the have you guys been, dude? Are you guys just all, are we, do we just like, <laughs> oh my God. All right. I'm sorry. We need to stream late night more. <laughs> Uh, thank you for ever gripping me to sub. I'm new here, but lurking for a channel for a while now. Hell yeah, man. Congrats. Thank you for the lurk, dude. By the way, anybody lurking, never talk. Like, that's fine, man. I understand that I'm television. I choose to be television. I like to be television. <laughs> um, so I get two streams Friday. Advantages of being a 12 hour time difference is, oh, oh, I guess that makes sense. Nice. That's dope. Hell yeah. Um, I've been busy. Oh man. I hope everything's doing all right though. Everything's been well with you, my dude. Move to a new house. Hey, congrats. Congrats. I was asleep. You woke me up with all this hubbub. Well, welcome to the hubbub. Enjoy it. Uh, on the grind lurking. Hell yeah, man. That's all that matters. As long as you're on. Listen, dude, as, as a fellow, like I don't really. There was a time and like I think a lot of you can even attest to this where I was very active in like everybody's channels. Like I, I like I lived in Twitch chat for like solid year. <laughs> uh, and I just got really busy. But I actually like, you know, I, I, I miss, I miss just lurking and well, I, I watch a lot. I, I think pretty much it's all I watch now is Twitch to be honest with you. But I don't really, I don't really talk in anybody else's chats anymore either. I lurk a lot. What? Trigun. Yeah. Trigun. Trigun. God dang. It's pretty good, man. The new Trigun is whew, it's pretty good. Um, Planning to move to CT. Oh, sh oh, oh, sh man. That's awesome. Hell yeah. What, what, why, uh, why there? If you don't mind me asking any, any particular reason or just excited to try something new. Uh, I'm a serial lurker myself. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Same. I work in IT just attempting to do a uh, switch to DevOps. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll listen. My, my good friend, uh, soon here, uh, my course will be out or the, the first of hopefully many courses that I will be doing with them, uh, will be out. And I, I hope that can at least start you down the right path. I, I genuinely think it's a solid solid day of learning but welcome and yeah if you have questions man like ask you know be a part of the community i think a big thing too is, is like be a part of programming communities whether it be ours other people's like it doesn't matter you know just be around engineers people people's like my i think i think honestly it's just about being around people with like like-minded you know like-mindedness that's what I'm trying to say. Yo, Agile, what's up, dude? It's midnight for me. It, uh, just came to say hi. Oh, dude. Well, thank you, man. It's good to see you, dude. I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you at least stopping by. I'll I'll see you Friday. I'll be back live Friday morning. So this is just the late night, the late night stream we do because I'm on the West Coast. So technically for me, it's only like seven o'clock. I have a kitty who just wants attention. Hang on. Look at <laughs> it's just why are you being so sweet, man? Can you see him? There you go. Mike's kind of in the way. Hold on.
Where are you going? Oh my gosh. He's just burying his head into my shoulder. <laughs> All right. Come on, buddy. Okay. Come on. Down we go. Yeah, he was being real camera shy. Uh, BG and B Kitty. Yeah, exactly. We have Kitty emotes. I don't know if you guys know this, by the way. Uh, hold on. That one and that one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Those are the boys. Those are like actually Edward and Alphonse. Edward is the hangry and Alphonse is the sleepy. Uh, dude, you're lucky I have four cats and none of them like being held. Really? I, I, you know, I, I think Atoda can attest to this as well. Like in the kitty category, we got pretty lucky. They are, they are very sweet. Just boys. Going to live like college student again and push for a house. When, oh, nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Good luck with that. My friend college life was interesting times for me. So. <laughs> Uh, going to live with some family to save up for a house. It'll be cheaper than Dallas. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, that's the real reason. Got it, got it. Um, there was an event that corresponded with you uh, getting more busy. Yeah, that's fair. That yeah, that's that's <laughs> yeah. Fucking not wrong there, buddy. Um, <clears throat> the the realization moment. Um. Hell yes, I am just attempting to get my virtual environment set up. Tried using Arc, but it's giving me so many issues. Going to switch to Ubuntu. Uh, I made a YouTube video on setting up dev environments. Uh, you might be interested in it. Um, I use... Uh, what do I use? I forget what I use in that video. <laughs> I don't use it anymore. I use Nix now, but um, it's a... Uh, what was it? What? Yeah. Yeah, but it was a specific. It started with an M. I can't remember the name of it. Why am I blanking on it? No, 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 no. Um, Manjaro. Manjaro. Yeah, Manjaro. Thank you. Yeah. Which I still think is not a bad operating system. Again, it gives you the ability to use Arch. It sets up pretty easily. Yeah, <clears throat> I had an orange tabby. He loved being held, and all my kitties uh, love sitting on me, but not being held. Interesting. Yeah, Alphonse really likes it. Is my Firefox still flickering? Uh, no. We fixed that. Yeah, we fixed that. I don't think it does that anymore. I don't think it does. I don't remember. I don't know. Nick's made me look stupid. Tried something in Repl, thing of where and tried a Nick's file and it didn't work. <laughs> Cal, what's up, by the way? How's it going? All right, let's pop into some programming. Let's like actually get some work done today. Um, so uh, chat. Uh, what just happened? Yo, Akira. Oh, why does that? Wait, why is is this? Is that just like hella delayed? Oh my god! I was like, what? Maybe it was waiting for me to get to this scene. Weird. I tried installing Nix OS and it confused me, so I got to reattempt it. I'm again. I know I keep talking about it, but I'm gonna be eventually putting out a youtube video on how to help you guys with nix on a bunch of different levels so i apologize but it'll help you a lot i've been well how about you i've been good man i've been good you know life's been interesting to say the least to say the least um okay so let's talk about what we did last stream really wasn't it supposed to yeah it was it's about five thousand weeks ago calface dude um i just keep getting busy with life man it sucks but don't worry don't worry <laughs> Uh, yo, what's up, Nightshade, dude? What the hell is this? I don't know. Life? <laughs> uh, yo, Dumb Chicken Biryani. What's up, man? How's it going as well? Is this Terraform? No. This is Packer. So I'm about to, I'm about to in educate you, you fools, if you would listen. All right. Coming in here all hot, being like, what the hell? What the? All right. Um, isn't this past your bedtime? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Dude, you guys want to become famous? We can reach out to fake facts. Um, all right, so here's the TLDR chat. Here's the TLDR. And I talked about this a bit last stream. Um, we're refactoring Quirk. 
right? And we're also refactoring the recording pipeline as well. And we're making it a service in Quark, which is going to be really exciting for a lot of different reasons. However, however, there's a lot of like lower level infrastructure stuff that I want to improve. Now, I talked to you guys a little bit about this last time. Hi, or hold on, hold on. And I talked to you guys about how I wanted to restructure and rethink my infrastructure from the ground up so that I was making sure that the resources that were like global resources, things that were like lower level dependencies, VPCs, networks, uh, subnets, right? Like ACL, like uh, an internet gateway, all those kind of things that don't, maybe they may not necessarily be a part of a service, right? Or a product. These are things that like move the company forward, right? Things like source control, DNS, networking, cloud images, CICD, right? Like all these things. I wanted to make sure that I thought about these and I was compartmentalizing or, or basically like, you know, abstracting the resources properly. So the idea is, is that whenever I go into any of these repositories, we're not really trying to change anything else related to this, right? Um, a lot of times when you make automation, you kind of just like do everything at once, but then you find yourself in scenarios where you change one thing and then like a bunch of other things have to change because of like dependency trees or whatever. Um, or some things may not be able to run in parallel. Some things may have to wait for others, like so forth and so on. And so doing this or taking this approach of being like, okay, um, I'm going to solve my networking automation entirely just in one networking repository, right? So whenever we want to add a new network, we just add a new network, right? That's a lower level change that we can make that services would not be impacted. You know, of course, if we do it right, I should say uh, that services should not be impacted at all. And then this allows us to have these lower level resources and mechanisms change underneath each other without having to necessarily worry directly about of uh, like, you know, oh, how am I going to impact this or that? Right. And again, this makes it so that it's really easy to create networks and add networks. Um, and then, you know, say like, okay, we're going to go to this repository. We're going to add a new network. Great. Now let's go over here and let's shift everything over to that new network. Right. We do it very safely. We do it in a way that's very expected. Um, and we don't have to deal with everything at once. And that's like a big point of what I'm trying to share with you guys here is, is when the automation fails, especially when there's a lot of things together, you've got just like, you know, spaghetti of cabling that you're trying to decouple and like you know unravel um and that's what this kind of like abstraction can help with it can help with that unraveling um and because you're just simply not changing as many things um <clears throat> so yeah that's kind of the idea um and a lot of this automation is already in place like source control we've already set up um, I created a document basically for each of these and kind of outlines the resources that we provide uh, within these repositories so that we can have a good understanding of like what they do, right? So for example, with source control, we say that source control automation is handled by Pulumi GitHub repository and maintains repositories and relevant teams in GitHub, right? The automation is written in TypeScript. So we know two things already. One, it's written in Pulumi and two, it's written in TypeScript, right? Then we talk about, well, what do we get in GitHub? And we say, okay, well, this is what we currently offer. And out of the box, now I've talked to you guys about this a lot, but this is where like, I'm gonna be making, again, I'm actually very excited because I realized I'm, I'm gonna be able to take these documents and like make them into videos for you guys, because I wanna show you guys and really kind of exemplify what I mean when we talk about off the shelf services and off the shelf resources right so when a developer goes to set up a repository right we're not saying like okay you go in and create a repository and da 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 we're saying well what you actually do is is you have repositories and teams if you set up a repository that gives you a branch protection that immediately assigns it to a specific repository or team uh administrator so that like teams can manage repositories instead of saying like okay every repo has its own manager and this is exactly how we do this at hippo there's no repository that has direct access by any specific person we separate everything by teams and then we set up team members per team and then we say okay these teams are now admins or contributors or whatever to these specific repositories right and then we add the you know the branch protections and like all the other things um and so this comes out of the box 
right so what do you have to provide you just have to really provide the repository name maybe what kind of repository it might be and the team that's going to be working on this repository right and again this is something that's easily scalable this is something that if you're at a large company you could easily say okay well you know we have the devops team we have the uh you know front end team we have this and this okay front end team gets these repos back end teams get these repos right everybody in engineering could potentially see everything you know it's uh it really just depends um yo braxian how's it going hello hello snickerdoodle as well what is up hello hello um and so yeah that's that's basically what what i mean by like off the shelf resources right um so if we kind of like start going through these and we start thinking about like okay what these are solving right we're solving source control meaning that if we want to set up new repositories that's over here easy to do go over there set that up bim bam boom right um dns that's another really huge problem now another thing and i want to kind of add to this is is um we want to uh we or we could say we provide cloud agnostic right automation repositories that provision um uh provision uh resources in multiple uh providers right that's that's basically what these are these are cloud agnostic automation repositories that provision resources in multiple providers so right now source control is just pulumi github right and that's really because that's the only place i keep it at the moment is just github whereas in the future right what we could say is this, we could say actually you know pulumi source control right if we wanted to abstract away the github which is probably a better idea and then technically we could have automation that says like okay we're going to create repositories in github we're going to create some repositories over here in gitlab right like it actually would enable you to have an automation that could abstract away even where you create repositories uh dns is the same thing dns becomes a little bit more complicated but this was also a really big thing that i wanted to do because i hate managing dns <laughs> um and this is actually something i'm working on believe it or not orca i'm 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 working right now on making all of our dns at hippo managed by terraform so if you remember what that was <laughs> Yeah, it's been fun. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, as a kind of like prototype, even I have built my own DNS off the shelf, right? Services, right? Or off the shelf automation. So again, same thing as we talked about with GitHub and resource control of getting that off the shelf repository. Now we're getting off the shelf DNS. We're saying like, okay, well, I want to create a zone, right? So at the base, you can create a zone in Amazon right and so then you say like okay well now that i have a zone i want to be able to also create um acm certificates right so be have the ability of not saying like okay i need to add all the you know add all of the stuff here but literally being able to say i want to solve a problem and that problem is is i want an acm certificate for my zone right and you'll see a little bit more why that is or why that's valuable um, in the next example that I show you guys. But in this case, right now, what I can say is, is I can say, all right, I have a zone, right? All right, cool. If I turn on ACM, then I should automatically get a certificate with that zone in the region that I'm working in, or maybe in the, you know, protect or in the, uh, expected regions that I want to put, put those certificates in. Right. So again, we're setting expectations of saying not like, okay, well, if you want us to sell, go set it up manually and then add the records yourself. What we're actually saying here is, is we're saying, no, you'll get that out of the box too. You just have to configure the zone so it knows if you want ACM or not. Same thing with DNSSEC, right? I want DNSSEC too. Cool. Just enable it. True. You get the signing key. You get the KMS key, right? And again, same thing for SES. And this is what I mean by when we talk about off the shelf, right? I don't want them to have to figure out how to set up ACM. I don't want them to have to figure out how to set up DNS. I don't want them to have to figure out SES or any of these other things. That's my job, right? Like that's that's our job in, in DevOps and, and you know, infrastructure. Um, their job is really just to make these things and, and you know, create things on top of them. Um, and so if they want email, you know, SES, cool. SES enable, you get your domain identity, you get your domain DKIM, and then you get those both TXT records created automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, now I talked about why it's important to have your problems considered and separated so that they can be more like generalized to what your, what your needs are right now. I'm showing you the Amazon example. However, one of the big things with this repository that I had to achieve early on 
was I had to make it work with multiple cloud providers. It, it, it like literally could not work with just Amazon because I have things in Cloudflare. And, and these things in Cloudflare are like production domains that are very important. So to not have those in automation too was a challenge. However, we had this scenario where like, even though we use Cloudflare, we still generate ACM certificates, right? Like that's, that's something we still do. And we still use SES as a backend. Right, we might not do DNSSEC, or at least DNSSEC might not be handled on the AWS side. But that's my point: is is like we we want to solve the problem of ACM and SES and DNSSEC, but we might not always be using the same provider to act or to give these as options. And so, if we go down to Cloudflare, you'll notice that it looks similar. However, what actually ends up happening is the uh the cloudflare zone that gets created is the same sense in the sense of like a route 53 zone in amazon right but this is now a cloudflare one so I've, if i'm like okay i want a zone in amazon i can just tell it hey i want an amazon zone and if i want a cloudflare zone okay i want a cloudflare zone but the configuration stays the same right so if i want an acm okay cool we can provide acms for our zones because we're using automation that allows us to be cloud agnostic right and so well what happens well when the zone gets created and we say okay we want an acm we want a certificate we then first create the zone right and then we go out to amazon and then we do the process of setting up the certificate with a certificate of validation which then creates the c names for that validation and you can see that kind of right here actually sorry i know it's a little bit difficult to see um Oh, here, let's do this. Uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, no, that, that failed me. Uh, but anyways, yeah, there's basically a C name right here. Um, and again, same thing for SES, uh, domain identity and domain DKIM. Now, you'll notice that DNSSEC is not on here. Well, that's because we solved DNSSEC from an Amazon perspective, but we haven't solved it from a Cloudflare perspective. Um, that might be something that, you know, I end up saying, well, if you enable it, you only get it on Amazon or, um, if you enable it, then we set up something through Cloudflare, right? Like both of those options are available to us. We can do either one. We could say like, all right, let's call it to Cloudflare and figure out how to do DNSSEC or whatever. But right now, because I don't really use DNSSEC that much, I'm not adding it as an option, but the main takeaway here would be is, is when we made it available it would be available via the same configuration key, right? DNSSEC. Now, again, it might make DNSSEC in Amazon. It might make DNSSEC on Cloudflare, right? But the way it configure, you configure it is the same and it doesn't matter to the user. All right, so we're going to keep moving a bit forward since I've talked to you guys a bit now and I think you can guys have an understanding of it. So um, we were last working... Um, basically with uh trying to set up some of the repositories that we needed for the quirk refactor we're about to do hang on and we've already created tickets for this right we've already created tickets for this um yeah sorry i know it's hard to see the c name one um and and that's something else i'm trying to really make sure we do going forward for the stuff we work on stream is i want to have a really good schedule um it is a good one. It is a good one, Snicker, or a Snickerdoodle. Um, so when we talk about the repositories and like what we need, you can kind of see that they almost kind of lay in top of each other of dependencies like source control. That's kind of where everything starts. We need to be able to put our code somewhere. We need to be able to like, you know, eventually run automation against it. So forth and so on, have GitOps, right? So source control is a really good one to start with at, at really at any part of any company when we're talking about like wanting to do DevOps, right? DNS is another really important one. Pretty much any company, whether you're a pizza delivery service or, you know, a tech company, everybody has to deal with domains. Right, we're all gonna have some kind of website that we're gonna host or something. Somehow, there somebody's gonna access, you know, our services via the internet. And if that's the case, solving DNS is another good problem to solve. And again, if you look at this, these repositories solve problems. Right? What's the next thing after DNS? Networking. What does that mean? Things like VPCs. Again, subnets. Uh, can we create V? You know, can, can we create networks in Amazon and Azure? 
Can we make sure that those two can then communicate with each other if we do, right? All of that automation can be handled there. Uh, and the one that we're really working on right now is, is cloud image. Now, source control, DNS, network, and a lot, and pretty much all of these besides cloud image are focused entirely on like being Pulumi automation. Uh, thank you for the follow. Cloud image is though a bit uh, unique because what we're doing with cloud image is we're actually saying uh, we want to be able to make images for instances to be able to run virtual machines and stuff like that. These are cloud images that we want to be able to automate and create. Um, and so we do that with Packer, right? Um, why do we want to have this as such a low level dependency? Because if we can make cloud images, then we can have automation around all of our instances that we create, right? And so when we start talking about like, okay, I want to deploy CI, CD, I want to deploy VPN, I want to deploy Kubernetes, I want to deploy, you know, whatever else, we have the ability of saying like, okay, well, we know how we can create these instances, right? We don't have to go at it every time and be like, well, how are we going to do this? I could create a very simple, you know, uh, instance to be able to create databases or like in all seriousness, and this is, this is real you, cloud image in a lot of ways basically handles like what RDS and, and, uh, you know, uh, elastic cash and like all these other like managed services provided by Amazon do, what do they do? They give you an instance, but they give you the instance with the service running inside of it. Well, you can do the same thing by creating cloud images if you wanted to. And that's why this is something we're going to start doing more um, and, and utilizing more is just because we want to be able to do that too, basically, and save cost, you know? Yo, what's up, Owen? How's it going, buddy? Is Nix added to the mix? Nix will be added to the mix. It's just not at this low level yet. Um, I will say that I think at some point we are going to we are gonna be running like Nix, you know, pretty much everywhere. We'll be running it in CI. We'll be running it, you know, locally um the ci part is still going to be a little bit of you know a little bit of time but what's up owen how's it going buddy so yeah so we're working on the ci cd one and the main reason why we are doing this is because we want to be able to oh, i'm sorry not the ci cd one we're working on the cloud image one is because we want to be able to provide circle ci machine runners as images to our network now you might be like well bg why is this such an important I'll explain it to you because if we want to be able to do things like create VPN service, well, not maybe VPN services, but create Kubernetes clusters or uh, manage anything internal to our network, right? That we don't want public, right? We need our CI system, whatever it may be, right? To be in our network so that we can run all of our other automation that we have here, right? So say in the future, if I'm like, all right, I want to run database automation. So I don't just create databases in Amazon, but then I also, you know, connect to them and provision their Postgres databases or like whatever, you know, whatever, you know, there's a lot of things Pulumi can do for us in that regard. Um, we can do that because we solved the problem of knowing that our runners can run in our network, right? And we solved that problem by knowing that we can create cloud images for those runners very easily. Um, now, last stream, we basically did the twin gate connector one. This is, this is what we worked on. However, um, and I, I hate to say this, I actually, <laughs> I actually undid that. Uh, hold on. However, I will explain why. And, and when, I, when I think I explain why, I think you'll be able to go like, okay. So last stream, we basically created a uh, Packer template for TwinGate to be able to deploy TwinGate connectors, right? We were going to deploy just a super uh, cheap TwinGate connector um, and it would have everything like pre-installed. However, upon further investigation chat, I found that TwinGate actually does have an AMI that they like maintain themselves. And it's right here. It's uh, TwinGate images, TwinGate AMD64, this guy. So what they recommend in their docs is for you to basically use this AMI if you want to use instances and then just inject uh, a secret. And so that's what we do. We basically, or inject, not a secret, but inject a configuration, right? So it's literally just run this instance and then make sure your configuration file is on it. And so what we do basically is, is we say, all right, let's get the TwinGate instance. It's all prepared and ready to go. We just add, 
user data here and this user data is the creation of that configuration file basically um cool okay so yeah uh that's why we're no longer going to actually be creating a packer instance for a packer image for uh twin gate connectors we, we basically don't need it they we were able to solve the problem um with just Pulumi, which was nice um but what we do need still is is we do need uh we we do still need the uh what's it called one the circle ci one for a few reasons and you might be like bg well if you could do that with that one couldn't you do it with all the other ones we could however if there's like problems right where like something breaks or doesn't install properly then th like you don't want to have to do too much it's really meant to be for like again in it initialization right like i just need to initialize this i don't want to have to install Docker, set up the Circle CI agent, you know, like make sure it's connect. Like all of that at, at startup is a little bit much, you know. That's really why you would like use Docker containers or something like that at that point, or I'm sorry, containers in general, basically. Um, and so with our machine runner, we have so many things that we want to install, and I can kind of explain some of these here. Um, so we'll say EC2 instance, for example. Um, not twin gate conne connector, but circle CI uh, machine or circle CI runner, right? We'll say circle CI runner. And then what we'll say underneath that is we'll actually say circle CI runner, right? Uh, and we'll say there's a couple things that we need. So like circle CI runner needs Docker. For example, it's going to use Docker community edition, right? That's, that's one of the tools that we need to make sure it's on it. Um, we also need to make sure that just is on it right just file because we do a lot of you uh, a lot of like just file things and and uh automation with that right uh another one that's probably really important as well is is, is doppler right we use doppler a lot for injecting secrets and things like that and so why am i you know why am i like making this is is it's really to make sure i am you know exemplifying what our runners kind of give you out of the box right it's that same concept of like i want off the shelf this and so because i want off the shelf this um i need to know what i'm gonna get with it right um so yeah we're basically setting those expectations if we need to add anything else in the future like for example and i mean this one will more than likely be here but just to make sure like jq right maybe we need jq for some reason or you know other tools we'll just add it to this and again we'll now know that our circle ci runner out of the box right gives us docker gives us doppler just file jq and you know then gets created into an instance ami um all right so let's let's kind of figure out where we are with regards to this because this is what we're working on right now um so i think so far i've set up docker we set up circle ci we set up circle ci to be able to use the docker uh commands and then we get to the template right here now i don't think this is right because i think what's any uh what's actually happening here is the files getting rendered and that's being injected as if it's like a command and that's not what we want um what we really want is is we want something that will enable us to move it or copy it as a file um so let's see here so path vars template file back in json json encode see i need to know how to move like like i just want to copy a file or uh like use a template as a file i see this will just give me the output generating json or yaml from a template json encode yaml encode no read the files determines if it exists hmm Now, last time we were working on this as well, we realized that Packer does not have the greatest uh, documentation, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so some of this is challenging. Uh, CircleCI instead of Ansible. CircleCI and Ansible. 
Um, I don't think they're exclusive. Yeah, I don't think those are exclusive, personally. But maybe that's just me. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Sin City. All the time. I think you'll find a lot of people here do that. I think you'll find a lot of people in general do that. <laughs> it's, you know... It's the, it's the technology god. Come on, man. Okay, so let's... Uh, You know what? You know what, Sin City? You have inspired me. Let's go to ChatGPT and ask it. <laughs> okay. Um, how, how can I take a template file uh, in HashiCorp Packer and uh, create or and uh, let's see and hmm create a file on the or create a file in the image with the or with the contents we'll see what it says i don't know how great of a question that was so oh 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 it's confident it's at least confident Interesting. You can replace values in the sample with the appropriate value for your use case, such a reason source of my is, huh? Type source AMI is type SSA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So that's that's really uh, show me the same example in HCL language. <laughs> Jeez, chat GPT, I swear. So there's a file provisioner that we're looking for. These are functions. Yeah, I'm looking for provisioners provisioners file there we go okay so this is what we're looking for content is a file okay so we want content and destination okay all right so <clears throat> let's do this so i think i'm going to kind of separate some of these a bit so that we logically make this a little bit uh cleaner no i'm not using chappy gbt for free i am paying the robot god uh and it is a definitely a fry from futurama scenario where uh, i just basically said shut up and take my money so um yeah willingly uh you know gladly uh you know down to support the our new gods yes i'm fine with it <laughs> I am okay with the new overlords. <laughs> um, coming from the guy making fun of it when it came out. Oh yeah, no, that's normally what old people do. And then we realize how great it is and we adapt it. So, you know, thanks for just telling me I'm old. I could have told you that too. Yeah. Uh, I did the same with Copilot. I don't know. Um, I don't know if Copilot, well, I use, so I use what's it called for that? Um, Tab nine. Yeah. Thank you. Tab nine. Uh, I really like tab nine. Um, although I will say I haven't tried copilot in quite some time. So, you know, maybe I give it another shot. See here in a little while. I think another reason why I don't use tab or uh, copilot is because I don't think it's supported on arm at the moment. Um, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think it's supported on arm at the moment. Um, I miss Copilot. That's cool. It's a little weird you miss a program, but you know, whatever. Do you? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Uh, okay, so let's go down here. It's uh, at least the Vim plugin doesn't seem to be. I, I don't know. I don't. Is it? I, I I don't know. Like like I said, this was the last time I looked at it. So, um, Codium, nice. Is that like copium, but for programming? <laughs> uh, 
looking a little thick yeah okay so here we go so i'm separating all the docker stuff right we'll do the docker stuff in their own in its own script then we'll do the circle ci stuff right and the reason why i'm separating this too is, is because this will give me opportunity to like add files between these steps and things like that to where i'm like just like doing everything at once and trying to make it all work um so okay so we've got docker here hang on one second chat give me one second actually that's all it is man let's just get it that's all i do i just i just do i just do everything in github actions <laughs> What is even DevOps, bro? What is it? My mind is blown. <laughs> Sorry, I just like how you said that. That was just funny. Bro, what is even DevOps, man? I, bro, I don't even know. You want me to be real with you? I'm faking all of this. <laughs> Does that make you feel any more like confident? And <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, so here's the file. So hold on let's go back to circle ci oh wait no no no. we can we can go here uh copilot should work on an m1 should it i feel like you're always right adrian so i should just listen to you right at this point that's what you want me to say right <laughs> what the hell is even devops i don't know bro i don't know all right so let's see what commands do we have here and let's find the ones that we're missing so we've got the curl shabam we've got the shamaud got it we've got the linux thingy shabam bam cool got it um and then they say after successful you can just delete that bam mamma jamma so we do that bam look at that and then after that we create the circle ci user and working directory right add user shenane there we go um and then we create the uh circle ci directory bam um right there now i'm not doing this because I don't think it's needed on a completely brand new virtual machine that I know the uh, user is not here. However, this is just a little like, hey, let's make sure that it's not there. If it is, then we don't need to do this. However, in this case, it's it's not gonna be there. So we just, we use this part. So we got this, bam, got it. Yup, make dir, got it. Shamoud, got it. Shown, got it. Uh, we do the sudo as well. Cool, looks good. Uh, oh yeah, the Kubernetes. Oh yeah, um, I swear I'm gonna go. I I want to go to KubeCon, and then hear somebody say Kubernetes. I'm gonna be like, I swear to God, you better watch my channel. <laughs> um, I know where you got that from. Uh, okay, hold on. So launch agent config. So here's where stuff gets interesting, which is we do our create the ho the configuration six hundred. Circle CI. So, okay. I think we need to add another shell provisioner here. You feel me? Provisioner shell, right? I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of this chat. That packer looking thick. I like how, I like how it was like, oh, dude, my, can you, can you allow that? My friggin' Firefox has crashed. That is one thing I am dealing with. A Toda. Shut up. <laughs> Told you not to do it. Uh, I feel like the Quebec uh, tool grows. Uh, I feel like the Quebec tool grows on you with time. What? I don't know what we're talking about. But what's up, live code? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we need a provisioner shell. But you know what? I think we also need a provisioner file. Right, because I think what we want to do is is we want to move the file and then you you know what I mean, you know what I mean. So provisioner file source no 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 it's gonna be content right. And then what we want is is we want the content to be this right here, bam like that. Yeah, there we go. You like that? Um, <laughs> sorry, getting getting naughty. I keep trying to oh my bad i keep uh trying to spread the idea of kube control being pronounced as the oh <laughs> nice yeah uh you know hey listen chat moves by fast and i i have to just take you i have to just imagine you're being stupid <laughs> i'm 
I'm sorry. I have to imagine you're trolling me by default. So, uh, the path will be up on the machine. This is written variable. Uh, if the prov provisioning user generally not root cannot write to this directory, you will receive permission denied. Okay. So I think what we probably want to do then is, is we probably want to do like destination equals slash temp slash not my temp uh launch agent config dot yaml right like i think that's what we want to do and then i think what we'll do in the other subsequent commands is uh you know actually do these thingies here that it wants us to do yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's gonna be the plan there 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 baba jim <clears throat> i have had coffee <laughs> oh god I'm going to be wired and then I'm not going to sleep tonight and then I'm going to be pissed off because I won't be asleep or I'll be awake as tomorrow or tired, not awake. See, I can't even talk right now. There we go. All right. So I think that's what we want to do. We wanted to go to that temp. And then what we do is, is we say in line, right? Because we, we want to, we want to do a few more steppies. Um, all right. So then we want to make the directory. We don't need to like, and, and here, cause we've got the power of arrays, you know, so might as well make it look nice. So make der P. So we, we, we touch the file. However, however, I don't think we need to do that here. I think what we do instead is we say MV temp launch agent config dot YAML, right? We're going to move from the temp directory to where it needs to be right yep that looks good okay i like it i like it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna chone um yeah i don't know if we'll be doing nick stuff today like i'm i'm gonna be real with you on that one i don't know if we'll be doing nick stuff today uh okay there we go so then we chone it circle ci weird i don't know why it's doing it like that um and then we chmod it 600 bam <clears throat> cool okay so then we can get rid of all of this basically and then this will set up the what does this do this sets up doppler yeah so this sets up doppler all right so now we've got what do we got what do we got what do we got so if we want to like kind of comment this a bit we could say install docker right we could say uh install circle ci like you see how this is separated and like i can easily look at this and be like okay this is the docker stuff okay like it's okay if it takes a few we're just building an image man like we're not this isn't docker where we're trying to like make you know caching layers and stuff. <laughs> it doesn't really matter here um so yeah install circle ci uh machine or i guess launch agent launch agent is what we'll call that or here we'll just call call it launch agent um uh we'll say copy launch agent configuration and then we'll say uh setup launch agent configuration thank you tab nine and then we'll say install doppler cli right and then we also said what else so if we go back to our document we also said that so we've got docker doppler just file and jq right so um we don't have just file so let's let's do that so just file install there should be like a simple com like installer script i believe the song's dope by the way chat Yeah, here we go. What is the default path for Ubuntu? Is it user source bin? Like where can I what what bin director directory can I put this in? Why not install it with Nix? Because I'm not setting up a Nix system right now. I'm not trying to. Like this is this is a uh uh, this is purpose. Like this is a CI runner. So I'm not, I'm not trying to set this up with anything shell. 
Ask chat GPT. Wait, what was I asking chat? Oh, yeah, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> um, what is the default bin directory for users in Ubuntu? I know you guys gave it to me, but I'm just going to ask for gits and shiggles. User bin. User bin. Ha, you were wrong. Either that or chat GPT is one of the... <laughs> Well, again, log back out and back in. Yeah. But I want the ones that are already in the path, right? Like I want to use one of the ones that are already in the path. So in line, in line equals shabam. Boop, boop. All right. And then the destination's going to be, what did we say? We'll, we'll trust chat GPT for right now. User bin. However, you know what we're going to do? We're not going to fully trust it. Because <laughs> we're also going to say uh, just uh, maybe like uh, version. Can we do like version? Yeah, there we go. Just version. So we'll, we'll, we'll do this as well to make sure that all of these things are working properly. Right. We'll do we'll do like a Doppler version. Right. We'll, we'll run its subsequent command doppler version that was not what i was looking for <laughs> version there we go so doppler dash dash version right uh circle ci agent i'm not gonna worry about that that's just setting up this thing itself uh docker so I guess what we could do if we wanted to is, is we could also add Ubuntu to the Docker, right? So it can also run Docker commands. However, uh, it won't be able to do it directly. So even if we do this, we'll probably have to just do like sudo Docker version, right? Because technically whenever you install Docker right away, the first time you can only run it um, as root as the old root <laughs> you know okay there we go so we get docker version we're not going to worry about getting circle ci right that's fine uh shell or no sorry uh doppler just and then we said we also wanted jq i mean jq is such a i don't uh, blah, 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 blah. i'm just wondering if i want to like apt where is apt where's at where are we all running apt what's the benefit of just over make i like it better <laughs> that's it you can use whatever you want man uh i even talk about this i did a youtube video on that by the way if you guys don't know i did a you a pretty a pretty good ah oh, dude are you freaking serious why is my fire can you just do god damn it hold on okay one second i don't know why that happened twice that's a bit of a frustration um but yeah so basically if you go to our youtube um i i talk about this in a video uh basically how to automate your cli tasks this video right here um, and I, and I basically say in it, I'm like, you can use whatever you want. Honestly, like it's up to you. You can really use whatever you want. Okay. All right. And so for this, we're just going to say sudo apt get update. Sudo apt get install. Yes. JQ. And we'll just say that these are like install additional tools, right? Just like whatever, whatever other things that we need. So install just CLI, Doppler CLI, and then like any other additional tools that we want. Uh, let's go here. We could split this out as well. This doesn't need to be chained because again, we can do that. 
yeah this looks pretty good okay so if we look back at our document jq just file doppler and docker ci yeah man of course um so jq there it is just there it is um doppler there it is circle ci agent there it is and docker and there it is as well now actually what's really nice about this is if i wanted to i could say like all right well you know what's really important first and foremost is to set up the circle ci stuff right because it's an agent and then we can put all the other stuff now that we've kind of like you know logically separated these things we can say like all right let's make sure the agent gets set up first the configuration gets moved you know uh the configuration actually gets uh copied properly and then we'll do docker doppler just and you know all of our additional tools um however let's also make sure that there's not other things we need to do so we we're at this right we don't have to worry about se linux we do need to start it though right now this step is optional but i think we should do it which is setting up the actual system d service itself right um and just like we did before however if we wanted to we could just make this a direct file because there's nothing really to template here uh we can create a circle service file so we're gonna say new oops sorry move this over here so you guys can see it uh new file circle service right like that and then we'll say service and then we just want to paste in that um and we can actually make this a little bit nicer like this can be separated like that that's fine okay so now that we've got that we need to add another file provisioner and we'll do this after we let's see after or actually we could do this right here we could do both of the file provisions right here if we wanted to or if we wanted to like make sure it followed the steps then we could do it afterwards and we could say okay um instead of this being this we would just say source equals right and this is where we say circle ci dot service and then the destination is going to be temp right circle ci dot service and just like we do setting up the launch agent configuration we go here and we can we don't need to do that because it already exists but we can say instead of this being this launch agent config.yaml this can be circle ci dot service like that right and then this doesn't go here but it actually goes to user lib system d right like that oh whoops no oh, whoops what oh that's right it's copying weird here we'll just do this circle ci service and then we'll just get rid of the touch pseudo touch part because we don't need any of this right cool okay so this does this this moves it basically after we've copied the launch agent system d uh config we can say configuration technically um and then we set up the launch agent system d configuration so we move it and then it wants us to chone it as well so we'll just it's probably already root but whatever we'll just do it just to be safe cool there we go okay so what does this do exactly oh and then we have to enable it as well yeah So what does this do, chat? This basically makes it so that the next time the machine starts, it'll make sure that the Circle CI service also starts, so that it'll start taking, uh, taking you know, jobs essentially. Um, okay, cool. So da -da -da, looks good. Verify the service is running. now here's the thing we don't actually we don't act yeah, i was about to say i don't i don't know if we want to actually start it because i don't want to you know have this thing start running while 
<laughs> like start running jobs while we're provisioning it, right? So we really just want to enable it. That's it. We just want to enable it. The next time it reboots, it should start itself basically. Um, so it should be fully configured before the first uh, start of the service. I'm pretty sure if you enable it on the next boot, it will start, right? I think so. But I think this is pretty much everything we need now. Like this is our whole, you know, configuration for, for Packer. So again, we do, we have our auth token, our runner name, machine runner. Now I will say this, if there, there is one thing we could try doing here, which is we could have everything run up to here and then have these steps, like these two steps, we don't even like these steps can still actually. So like technically these steps could get moved up and then these steps right here could be in cloud in it. That would make it so that this would actually be completely dynamic image. We could run any resource class we wanted with it, as well as any uh, instance type we wanted with it. And we would just simply inject the credentials somewhere else. So we might do that. I actually kind of like that idea, but for right now, I'm not like super worried about it. It's just something I'm kind of thinking about in the back of my head is like an optimization we could do later. Again, not one we're gonna do right now. Um, all right, so let's do this chat. So at this point, we're pretty much able to uh, try running this. So I'm gonna say just build. Um, actually, I'm gonna say just validate first. Let's make sure that it's valid. Okay, so we uh, circle CI stat, circle CI service. Huh. Is that because I'm not in the directory? Hmm. Fonzie, come on, buddy. I love you so much, but you can't just like doe eye right next to me while I'm streaming. <laughs> oh, Fonzie. Maybe it does want me to do this. So, uh, yeah. Maybe this will fix it. Fonz, come on, dude. Oh. Ah. Can you can you take him please? <sighs> Never mind. Sorry. He just jumped into my lap full knife knives out. Uh, he's just like wants attention really bad right now. There we go. So yeah, so it looks like it looks like it is relative to where I run it, which isn't the uh yeah, he, 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 he's just been sitting next to me like this whole time. <laughs> what I am interested though is, is I don't understand why this works, but the other one doesn't. You know what I mean? This is slightly interesting. All right, let's do this. I'm going to do something else. We're going to go here. I'm going to do this and I'm just going to go into the directory. There we go. Packer build or Packer, sorry, validate. Boom. Oh, right. Ah, dang it. Okay. So I kind of do have to do that, I guess, if I want to use it injectable with Doppler. Huh. It's really interesting why that resolves that way. Very perplexed, but whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So just validate should be good. Okay. So just, um, build cool. All right. So here we're going to actually try building the image itself. Now, remember we're using Doppler to inject the credentials, uh, into the image. But again, there's a solid chance we might not need to do that. We might just make it so that the, uh, file gets generated. Um, and injected basically. All right. How you doing chat? You guys having a good night? Chilling out. All right. 
How we doing there? All right. User dockered. Oh, because. All right. I know why. We tried editing it before we created Docker because we moved the Docker block. That's totally fine. We need to move the user mod to the Docker section. That's the fix here. So one second chat. We can, we can, we can fix this. This is an easy fix. Once it decides to give me my here, actually, let's just, uh, eh, I'll wait. good working out how to handle different email formats not ever oh yeah no i i don't envy anybody who needs to work with email <laughs> that sounds terrible okay so the docker stuff anything related to docker yeah you see like that right there that needs to be moved to the docker section so yeah there we go so we add circle ci Oh, Lithium, thank you, man. I appreciate you uh, resubbing, dude. Thank you for the 16 months. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Thank you for 16 months, dude. Thank you for hanging out, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, this is going to be a new time slot. Seriously, chat. This is this is one of the new time slots, so <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> We're going to be here. Okay, we missed something. Oh, 115. Tell you what, chat. We're going to do it. We're going to, oh, yo, diabetes. <laughs> yo, that's how a total loves to say diabetes. <laughs> what? Right. Yeah. The diabetes. Uh, thank you, dude, for the, uh, the resub as well, man. Or uh, the, the, the prime sub, my bad, not the resub. Jesus. Thank you for the prime sub, dude. Those Bezos buckies, man. Thank you. Uh, I'm just writing docs on how to set up the server from scratch. Uh, not sure if Docker is a good idea to automate this. Um, I mean, if you want to create a Docker image that have those inside of it, and when you start it, it'll do those things. Then yeah, that, that, that could be a good thing. Uh, Lithium note. Thank you so much for the 16 months, man. And diabetes. Thank you for the prime sub dude. Those Bezos buckies. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. What was I doing? Oh yeah. Uh, all right. What I want somebody to do is I'm going to change yeah all right chat somebody change the lights really quickly you know this scene right here it's about to be nighttime we're about to go to a different scene i just need somebody to change the lights once so it'll go to the new default scene there we go there's purple yeah there we go there's the new default scene oh thanks bro you should not be allowed to redeem that have to do it if you don't want to. No, 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 no. You, you, you've made your decision for me to get you the f back. I can't wait till we get you a standing desk. I'll make you stand all the time. I know it's because you're a fucking masochist. You love being hurt. <laughs> okay. Um. Looks good. Okay. Let's try rerunning this again. A Dota team it on yeah, don't you dare. That is pretty cool that you can see a toad like a toad is much lower. And are you serious? Look at this fucking cat, dude. He literally like oh, Alphonse is a little like seat stealer. He was waiting for me to leave to steal my spot, and I think Edward wanted it too. <laughs> Look at him. Edward's like, what the fuck, man? That's where I was trying to go. Oh my god, he's already laying. You can't see him, but he's already just laid out. Like, I'm good, man. I'm not going anywhere. You're a spoiled little brat, Alphonse. I love you very much, but you're such a spoiled brat. Oh. All right, let's see how far we get here. Okay, so it looks like we enabled the service. That's good. Docker's getting installed. All right. 
So yeah, so it looks like it looks like the first sh shell script at least got set up. Yeah, they do. There we go. All right, Docker works as well. We got the output here from Docker. So we're running 2301 or whatever that is. All right. Cannot create regular file user bin just. Ugh. So is that just because it's sudo and we're not like I'm not running sudo? That's probably what that is. Oh, hang on one second, chat. I was not back. My bad. Hi, chat. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, no, I was, I was, yeah, I messed it up. Um, so interesting. If I just do pseudo bash, then that should work, right? Yeah, I think, I think that's all I need to do. Uh, JQ. Do I have JQ? I do. Look at that. Noise. Noise. All right. Let's see if this works. Yo, I love that you guys are helping each other out. You guys are the best. Oh, geez. I almost poured coffee all over myself. <sighs> Although I did just like splash back onto my face. The Guar, what's up, dude? Do you like Guar the band? Or or are you Guar the band? <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> Fair enough. How's it going, man? Hello, hello. Nice. Nice. There's just. There we go. Just worked. JQ worked. Hey! There we go, chat. We got it. Cool. All right. So here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Which is now that we've got that working, um, we're going to take the next step into our automation problem solving. Now we have a circle CI machine runner AMI being created, right? That's great. So we've, we've gone ahead and we've done the cloud image steps. We've got source control, DNS, networking, cloud image, right? Now what we want to do is we, we want to handle CI CD, right? Um, I thought about this a bit. And one of the things that we do not have at hippo that I kind of wish we did is I wish we had good automation around our CI CD. We, we, we have it in the sense of like it's in automation, but it's like added somewhere else. Whereas I kind of wish it was just separated and on its own. And we, we might, I might end up eventually doing that. But now that we have, and again, this is also like something I try and do a lot chat, which is like, I don't try doing a step ahead of something, right? Because I'm going to have to do that step before anyways. Right? So for us to create CI CD automation, right? Or basically like CI CD, you know, any kind of dependencies or resources for it. We said that we needed cloud image so that we could have that, you know, machine runner. Now I'm going to be real with you, chat. This is going to be on the radar. I want you guys to know this. We are going to eventually jump into GitHub actions. Um, I'm not very happy with circle ci right now um i'm not super stoked on or i haven't really been enjoying the experience either um and so i am kind of you know thinking about getting other things out there and and trying other things and so yeah there's a there's a seriously solid chance that uh i we might be looking at other things in the future so 
yeah github actions is one of those things another reason why i want to look into github actions is also simply because github actions um does have the same offerings as machine run or as circle ci in the sense that like you can run it in machines and you can also run it um you can also run it uh in kubernetes so being able to do both of those would be pretty nice uh i've been balls deep in secret so get lab ci stuff not sure if i love it yet or not yeah and the exactly the breach as well yeah not fun what's up stoop kid how's it going buddy what username hello as well hi hi how are you welcome welcome what dratton hello hello as well um cool so actually let's let's do this really fast well you know all right so actually yeah here's what we're gonna do i want to get rid of the steps we said we weren't gonna use right so basically this and this oh sorry no 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 this and this need to be moved to our automation right so copying the launch agent configuration this is now going to be in cloud in it this whole configuration file we're just gonna we're gonna make it get rendered in cloud in it the next thing which is set up launch agent configuration this is also going to be in cloud in it right so basically it's going to render the file set it up and i yeah i'm wondering if maybe ooh, I'm wondering if maybe what we should do is, is we should move enable and start to it too. You feel me? So like what I'm thinking is, is like, we basically don't want this thing to process anything until we launch it. Right. But we just, we want it. We, we just really want to be able to simply just launch it. So what I'm thinking is, and here, here, here's what we'll do. We'll say, um, you know, one, two, three, uh, cloud in it. Can I do four? I cannot. That's one thing that does bum me about notion. You can't do more than three of these things. Um, so let's do, let's do this. Let's say, uh, cloud in it, right? Cloud in it needs to basically handle these steps that I am about to rip out. So the provisioner file and this, these need to be handled by cloud in it. So we're going to go here. We're going to change this to like bash, right? And then we're just going to paste this in. Oh, no, we're not. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Does it make, does it want me to like copy, copy it? No, hold on. I should be able to, oh, I think I have to yank it. Nope. Seriously? Ugh, cat, um, circle CI main. Okay. So we want the file provisioner. No, that's the service. Wait, what? Watch it. Okay. Here. So this and this we want over here. There we go. Okay. So now if I go back here, I can remove those because I've got them here. So we're going to get rid of this. This will be done in cloud in it. And this will also be done in cloud in it. Otherwise we'll do the service the same. We'll set it up the same. Oh, interesting. Oh, look at this system D service. Oh yeah. We don't need any of this here. Launch agent config. Oh yeah. Look at this. Like there's actually, hold on. Okay. So there's some of this that we can just get rid of, I think. So we set up the username op circle CI so we can create the directory. That's fine. Launch agent config. That's going to be done with Halloumi. So that can be take gotten rid of, uh, circle CI launch agent config. Yep. That's already done. That's already done service service okay cool yeah yeah so this is actually what we need this is all we need because the user the the service stuff is done here right and then the configuration itself will be done in cloud in it here right 
And again, we're gonna we're gonna make it so that it's not being done with, um, you know, Packer. This will actually be done with uh, what's it called? Um, do they have HCL? They do not. Okay, uh, Bash basically. That'll be Bash commands. All right. Uh, let's see how time goes. Good luck, dude. If you need help, jump in the Discord and ask questions. We have a pretty awesome community that uh, should definitely be able to help you. Um, okay, so with that being said, we aren't going to need this file anymore, the config template, like this file anymore, right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm also going to cat this file. So launch config template, and we'll go back here. Oops, sorry, no, not here. Go back here, and we'll say cloud in it bash right now this is literally going to be our script i'm just moving everything here now so we have it so like for example i think this you could do like cat i don't remember how to do it exactly but we'll we'll make it basically so that we can cat this into a directory and then this will have you know whatever we want in it um okay cool so we've got we've got at least the references that we need we can now get rid of the config templates Go back here, go like this, do that, go here, right? And we'll go through it one more time. So let's go through it one more time. So again, the goal now is to make an AMI image that we can inject the configuration and change the instance type, essentially making this so that we can run any resource class for Circle CI, as well as any instance size for running those resource classes right so we've decoupled the instance size and we've also decoupled the configuration so that we can basically add any configuration we want to this and we're making sure that this image no longer has credentials being injected into it which is pretty nice too so cool yo what's up coder how's it going buddy how you doing coder i'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like that now <laughs> So we can get rid of those as well too, actually. Um, and now that we've gotten rid of that, honestly, we don't really need the just file anymore. Um, so we can even get rid of the just file and we can just use normal Packer commands because we have no need for, um, you know, we have no need for uh, adding secrets or, or anything like that. Um, so I can just do like secrets Pulumi, or I'm sorry, uh, Packer validate, uh, circle CI machine runner service. Oh, right. Service. So this will go here. There we go. Valid. Dope. All right. And let's deploy it or build it, I guess. Now, I've, I just built one, so I'm actually going to go delete that one, too, because we don't need it anymore. But while that's doing that, let's do this. Oh, God, I didn't mean to just throw my YubiKey. Uh, what? Okay, let's just try that again, I guess. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, that was weird. I guess we had, like, a glitch in the matrix for a second. Right, hang on okay all right so let's do this let's go to ec2 let's go to ami's twin gate connector can be deleted this one can be deleted as well we don't need either of these deregister yep and then we'll go to snapshots yo thank you for the follow and we will delete these snapshots as well. Bam. Because we only want the new one, which is the one that we're creating right now. Everything's looking pretty good, chat. Bam. There we go. All right. So our AMI has officially been created. Um, now, we don't have any automation to running this like these actual uh, image creations in Circle CI, or at least yet. Um, there is a ticket for that, 
Packer scheduled updates, right? So eventually at some point, uh, we'll have, well, I guess, yeah, this is just for the runner itself. Yeah. So, um, I don't, I don't know. Would I have any kind of, I guess I wouldn't have any kind of problem. Are the cats I hear from you, VG? No, you shouldn't hear. It. No, you, I think those are yours, buddy. Um, so I guess the question I'm kind of asking myself right now is, is do we want to create Packer uh, automation so that it runs in CI right now, right? Um, I think theoretically we could. Like, I don't think we need self-hosted runners for that. And we, it would at least make it so that like when it runs, it could build it however I, does packer does packer like do testing as well can you do like no i know jono but the question is is like like to do this the right way we really want this to on every push create an instance run it against it but then not create the ami you know what i mean so that's why i'm kind of asking myself or asking like packer testing you know what i mean like that's kind of what we want to do is, is we want to do like like, how could you test it without making it basically actually create the thing, you know? We're creating automated machine images with Packer. What username? That's what we're doing right now. Like, instances. Instance images. So, while loud boot finish, do waiting for cloud in it. That's pretty neat that it actually knows how to, like, wait for cloud in it and stuff. I have no idea what that is. That's why I'm asking. Like, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm wondering like, cause see like what they do is, is they, they just tell you to provision it. And like, I could do that. I could make it so it runs on merge, but like, you know, I don't want to, I, I would be neat to be able, like, I don't mind it creating an instance every time, you know, like that's basically the same thing, but I just don't know. No, that's not what we want. Documentation, CLI, build, debug, disables parallelization and deal with debug flats builders that they should output debug. These have they left something builder, force, cleanup only, parallel, timestamp, var. Yeah, so it looks like build really does just flat out build. Like it doesn't look like, like, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, is like what we could do is we could run like like validate i guess right like we, we could run packer validate on prs like that's kind of what i'm asking myself right now chatter is is like what what would we do on a pr merge you know on a pr versus like on a merge like on a merge we'd build them right we'd actually burn build them but on a pr since we don't want to build like you know what i mean like what else could we do because it's build, which doesn't have any type of like, you know, ability to focus on anything, I guess is what I mean to say. Like testing, init, format, fix, inspect, validate. Yeah, so it feels like validate would really be the only valuable thing here is to do a packer validate, which like right now, like I'd rather work on other automation than doing this. Uh, what you really want to be able to do is to tag the resulting image and then tell a different PR to use it as its builder. Wait, what? I don't know if I follow what that means, but it, it sounds like it could be right. <laughs> Not trying to, I like, I don't, I, you, that possible. Yeah. I like, I feel like I understand what you're saying. It's kind of like how Docker works. Cause you'll generally change the image when you need something new for a different PR. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's why like, I just, I don't know if I want to solve this problem right now. That's like the TLDR, you know, we have a ticket here that I could change to just like Packer, uh, Packer, uh, integration, uh, uh, and delivery. Right. So we could basically say like, how are we going to integrate and, and d handle delivery? Right. So we can run CI. I don't mind leaving this till later just to get this out the door. You know what I mean? 
because again I, I only need this one image at this one time for this one thing cool okay at least at the moment there's a solid chance i'll probably have to go back and fix it a bunch so who knows <laughs> i might be regretting that statement already you know how it goes chat okay so we've got that let's go ahead and let me let me push up this code feature uh circle ci machine runner uh initial implement Im implementation implementation did i spell that right i m p l e m e m e n t a o and yeah i think so i think i did that right all right so let's push this up and let's refresh this really quickly and let's take a look here so in source control we now have a circle ci machine runner circle ci service file which is for starting our launch agent with the config in the place that we expect it to be in and then we have our circle ci machine uh, runner template in HCL. So we set up our required plugins. We then set up the AMI that we want, which is Ubuntu. We then set up our source, which is Ubuntu. We say that the AMI name is Alta 4 LLC Circle CI Machine Runner. Uh, we associate a public IP address. Yeah, actually, this, yeah, we could definitely build because of the public IP address. But, anyways, um, SSH username, all that stuff. And then we go to build. Okay, so build. We install the launch agent first, so we curl it, the script, right? Chmod it, we run it, um, and then we remove it. We then add the Circle CI user, set up the op directory, chmod it, shown the uh, both directories for user as well, and then add the Circle CI user to sudoers and make the etc opt circle ci directory now the etc circle ci directory should be for the yeah the configuration itself so etc opt circle ci so yeah so we create that directory that's good and then we move forward we say like okay we're going to copy over circle ci service so that's this file right we move that to the actual host and we put it in temp circle ci service and then we run another shell script and we say okay we want to move it from temp service to the system D location for running services. We chone it as root and then we chmod it 755, but we don't do anything else. We don't actually like enable it or anything like that because we want to enable it and start it somewhere else. And as a matter of fact, we might even not really enable it. We may just simply start it. Um, but anyways, after we set up the agent system D, we then do Docker. So we do apt get update. We do the Docker dependencies rings set up the key ring, set up the repository, do an app get update, install all the Docker stuff, add the users so that they can run Docker and then do Docker version to make sure Docker got installed correctly. Um, after this, we then also uh, set up Doppler. So we install Doppler's uh, app key, set up the repository for Doppler, app get update, bam, saw it, and then check to see if it's running. Great. Same thing for just, just we run its script. We run it with sudo so that it can go to user bin and then we check to see if it's working and bam, it is. And then we say finally any other additional tools, JQ, if we want to say like curl, whatever, we could add all of these to it and then set it up. Um, so what advantages does this have over Ansible? There's no need for a, I now need to configure the thing I just started, right? In this scenario, we create batch images or I'm sorry, we create automated images and we just run them. So in the scenario where you were to say like, oh, hey, BG, um, how do you upgrade your machines? We don't. We just destroy them. We create a new image and then we create new machines with that new image. Um, these are This is a way of creating ephemeral infrastructure, essentially. Um, and that's, that's what we're trying to do here with this. Yeah. Um, so adds new circle CI machine runner uh, template. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. That's what we called it, right? Yeah, Circle CI Machine Runner. Perfect. Okay, cool. So this is set up. We've got our new Circle CI Machine Runner template. We're not going to worry about doing automation right now, but we at least have it in source control. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to squash and merge this. And if we go to the Packer image main repository, we'll see, bam, there we go. Circle CI Machine Runner. Now in the future, here's what's awesome we have a repository now let's okay so actually here's what's awesome and i'm going to give i'm going to give you both reasons why the first reason is we just solved the problem of creating pre-made automated instance images 
right? That's very powerful. If in the future I was like, all right, I want to create an instance image with Postgres, I could easily do that. I could come in here. We've already got the, you know, the uh, Packer stuff set up. Like I can just immediately go in here and start creating it. Once we add automation to this, then automation will go into each one of these directories, create each instance image, and then be able to, you know, do whatever it needs to, to save it, right? So again, this is very powerful because we definitely solve the problem of, I want pre-configured instances and I want them to be pre-configured basically, or I want them to be preceded with things before they start. Now to go back to your question before, what are the advantage of this over Ansible technically? And I will always die by this, which is most of these things work together. They do not replace each other. So Packer is really great because Packer can do what does your preceding. Now I talked about this before where I said, Hey, Think about where you want to make your changes and where you're going to make them. In a lot of circumstances, sometimes with Ansible, you just want to configure and run something, right? You don't want to also have to do all this extra boilerplate setup, dependencies, whatever. So I would challenge you to say, hey, do all of your base level stuff, like all of your installations, all of your whatever with Packer right? Create that like almost base image, but for an instance, kind of like what we're doing here, right? We're not adding the configuration file for our circle CI agent because we want that to be dynamic, right? Because we said that we want machine runners to be of like big size, you know, small size and be able to configure it for different resource classes. So the goal of this image is really to be like a configurable, like just drop my config in and run it. And, and then be able to do that. And so what we can say is, is we can say, okay, Packer does all of the like hard stuff, right? It, it takes care of all the setup of all the programs, like all of the system, you know, all of the whatever. And then Ansible simply drops in the dynamic configuration for that and then runs it, right? Or whatever. And so you separate that like, all right, now I need to wait for Ansible to do all these things. And you just do it once when you create the Packer image. Right. And then you just solve the problem of configuration with Ansible because that's what Ansible really does do well. It does configuration really well. Um, whereas like Packer does, uh, you know, automation of creating images very well. Right. And if you combine the two, then you could have a serious, you know, serious, uh, cool little thing on your hands. And so that's why I'm saying like, I think they work together. I really, I think you could do, you could easily do both. As a matter of fact, like that's what I would suggest at Hippo. Like I would be like, all right, let's create Packer, right? Image, like base images, right? Have everything we need in it. So we're not wasting time. Like think about this chat. If you put everything into cloud in it, every time that instance starts, you have to wait for those things to finish. And you, you don't even know if they're going to work. Whereas when you make it with Packer once, you know it installed, you could run test commands, whatever you need to in the Packer, you know, template to make sure that it's working. And then when you start it, you only have to worry about the configuration part. That's it. There's no setup, right? And so that's why, again, this can be very powerful. So the chain is Packer, Terraform, Ansible. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's literally what we're going to do, what username, except for we're not going to do the Ansible part. We're just going to do Packer to Terraform, or in this case, Packer to Pulumi. Yeah. Uh, clear the app cache. These aren't Docker images, so we don't really need to worry about that. Uh, what is the best uh, practice to prevent merge conflicts? Uh, conflicts? Do you use git rebase command? I use rebase and squash together. So whenever I merge, I always squash all of my commits and then I always rebase those commits as well. So I do both. Yeah. I think, I think that's the best way to do it in my personal opinion, but that's, that's just me. Um, okay. So chat, you know, what's awesome which is because we are using linear. And if you guys don't know what linear is, um, yes, I have used obsidian actually, as a matter of fact, what username, there was a whole period of where I was streaming and using it exclusive or exclusively. Um, I ended up falling in love with notion just because of it's like, I can use it. I can do it anywhere. You know what I mean? Uh, obsidian anywhere becomes a little bit more challenging, but I, I do like obsidian. I think it's a cool piece of software. Um, so like I said, because we, have linear in place and you'll notice that if i go back to my pull request for packer image that i just closed you'll see that there's also a little a little linear bot here and if i click on this you'll see that it actually does include 
what I have in linear and injects it into the comment here. So if I click this, I can actually see what ticket that's related to. And you'll say I need to create a twin gate connector, I need to create a circle CI machine runner template. Well, we've already done the twin gate one because this isn't being done anymore. However, this one, the circle CI machine runner, that's what we just did right here, circle CI machine runner. Um, and so because linear is integrated with our source code, whenever we finish a project or finish a task, it automatically gets closed. So we just closed one of the things we were working on from last stream. So we're gonna start something brand new now. And that brand new thing is, is we're gonna create a whole new Pulumi repository. We're gonna create it in Go because I do wanna make all of our automation in Go going forward. Um, and the goal here will be to create a repository that can now create us CircleCI runners, right? So we have the AMI now we want the actual runner with that so if we go back to automation right we just finished cloud image now we're going to go to ci cd so we need to create a new pulumi ci cd uh ci cd repository it's going to be written in go right and in this we should be able to provision a t3a small two gigs or two cpus two gigs of ram right and in this it'll be a Alta 4 machine small resource class. And so what's gonna happen is this Packer, right? Creates that instance runner AMI. And then Pulumi is gonna create that instance. And when it does, it'll use that AMI, put it into our private subnet behind our NAT gateway. And then now we can run automation in our network, right? So that's gonna be the next thing we do. Um, gentle automation. Let me tell you that after I take a quick break, I got to go to the bathroom and that's a little bit more of a longer explanation. I promise I have a good one for you. So if you stick around, I can explain it. Um, but yeah, I, I got to go. I just like killed a whole coffee and now I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, the TLDR is, is it's basically just if you want to use a language, but there's a lot more nuance to that that I would like to share with you as well. Um, I am going to quickly go to the bathroom, guys, before we start this. So like I said, we are going to create a brand new repository. Um, and it's going to be, again, it's going to be written in Go. And the goal here in this repository is going to be so that we can create automation for CI CD resources. And again, right now, we're just going to create CI CD resources for circle CI, but in the future, there's a solid chance that we might make circle CI resources for, I'm sorry, uh, CI resources for GitHub actions. Who knows? Maybe at some point we'll even go back to GitLab. I have no idea. Probably not though. I'm not really interested in going back to GitLab. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am going to take a super quick break. Uh, if you are new to our channel, by the way, thank you for being here. This is a new time slot for me. I normally streams during, I normally stream during the days. Uh, Mondays and Fridays in the morning between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. So you normally can catch me during the day. However, um, this is going to be a new stream slot for me. I'm going to be streaming Wednesday nights um, from around 7 p.m. to around 10 p.m. Um, just so that I can be live more during the week, uh, but also so that I'm not live so much while I'm at work. Uh, my company is really supportive. They're really nice. They, they do actually support the stream. Uh, and basically, if you haven't or if you weren't aware um i had a conversation with basically the company and um we just sat down and we're like okay cool well what days would be best for you and during the days at least during the daytime mondays and fridays are going to be the best so i will be live monday and friday mornings um and then i'll hang out with you guys wednesday nights and atoda is also going to be streaming thursday nights now uh, including with his Saturday night. So if you are new again, be sure to stick around, check out all the cool stuff, check out the discord as well as the YouTubes. Um, uh, but yeah, this is a new time slot basically going forward. Um, which is probably why there's a lot of people who are like, Whoa, BG streaming right now. Holy crap. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to take a super quick break. I'm going to run an ad while I take the break as well. If you guys don't know why we run ads, we basically run them so that Twitch doesn't get mad at us. Um, and so that you guys don't have to see even more ads when we run it. Yeah, exactly. No, I get it. I, I want, you know, I, I talked to a Toto about this before the stream and I will say this before I really go to, which is I, I wasn't too sure on like how many people were even going to show up. <laughs> um, mostly because again, I don't, I never stream at this time. So I think a lot of people, a lot of people might think it's, um, a Toto stream because he normally streams night as well. So I think, I think it's going to take a little bit of time before everybody gets used to the new schedule because a Toto is going to be streaming tomorrow and he normally doesn't stream nights, you know, during the week as well. So yeah, you know, we'll get there. Don't worry. Eventually I'd love to make it so that at least, you know, we're, we're hanging out with both our UA or us crowd, 
you know, and our EU crowd, because I know we have an EU crowd. You guys are awesome. You guys are so supportive. We don't really get to hang out as much. So that was why it was like, all right, instead of just streaming during the day again, let's stream one time at night and hang out with, uh, hang out with the homies. So yeah. All right. So I'm going to take my break. I appreciate it. When I get back, I will explain why Palumi over, um, I will explain why Palumi not over, but at least like, you know, what you might, why you may want to use Palumi versus Terraform vice versa. Uh, when I get back, all right, be right back. I'm going to take a quick break. Hi. Thanks for waiting. I appreciate that. Okay. So why Pulumi over Terraform? And I'm always going to say this, like I said before, which is, I don't think there's necessarily one better than the other. I use Terraform exclusively at work and it does a really great job at solving the problems we need at Hippo. We, <coughs> excuse me, we do not use, <coughs> excuse me. We do not use Pulumi really anywhere at Hippo, uh, at Hippo right now. Um, there's one place that we thought about using it, but I don't think we do. So I want to be very clear with that, right? Like, I don't think necessarily one is entirely better than the other. I think it's about what problem you're trying to solve. That's like my mantra these days. Um, and what I mean by that is, is like, do you want to be able to write your automation in languages, right? In a programming language to where you can have really high levels of, 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 of uh, abstraction where you can, you know, create, uh, you know, off the shelf, like classes that represent your resources. You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of the, the idea is just like with Terraform, you can do that, but you can only go so far with HCL. It's just the plain and simple of it, you know? Whereas like a general purpose language, Python, JavaScript, you know, Go, whatever, these languages have things that are built into them to make them easy. Yeah, I was about to say, for loops is one of the biggest complaints in general when we talk about building anything with HCL, you know, uh, iteration, you know, variable declaration, things like that. You can, you know, with a programming language, you have the ability to also use the language. So... For example, if you wanted to, it would be very difficult to integrate a secret service of your own with Terraform, right? You'd have to like figure out how to like CLI wise inject things or whatever, or, you know, have a provider available in Terraform for you to do that. But with Pulumi, you just use the language, right? You could literally just put requests right next to, you know, resources if you wanted to um and so that's a big you know if you feel like you need those things if those are the problems you're trying to solve then palumi can very be very powerful because it you know has the language that provides you with that flexibility so yeah i hope that answers your question and uh i hope you try both genuinely i hope you do um Okay, so let's go to Pulumi GitHub, right? Because we said that we solve our problems with different automation repositories. And so if we want to create a new automation repository for uh, CICD, then we need to create that in Pulumi GitHub. All right, so we're going to go to, actually, we're going to yarn. Now, this automation repository, as we say in our notes, again, if we go back here, go to automation, source control, it's written in TypeScript, right? Um, and so because it's written in TypeScript, I have to use Yarn. However, I was literally just thinking about this while uh, on my break, which is I believe that as long as you write it the same way, whether it be in Go or in TypeScript, you don't have to change the state. And that is another really cool thing about Pulumi that... I just kind of even realized fully, which is like, say I write automation in TypeScript and then I'm like, ah, you know what? I'd rather have this automation and go, right? As long as I, you know, create the things the same way so that the same IDs get generated, the same names get generated, like all that stuff, then the state should not change. And I should be able to actually move from like one language to another pretty, pretty easily. Um, which that, yeah, that definitely kind of excites me like that. That could definitely mean that the ones that we do have in TypeScript 
we could easily migrate and I don't have to worry about like, oh man, what are we going to do about the state? All right. So we're going to create a new repository and we're going to call this one CI CD. Uh, Plumi automation for CI CD uh, resources. Ah. <sighs> I wish this continuous integration delivery, <laughs> like we could do that, like, but that's just like, oh, CICD. I hate, the only thing I hate about this is just the name of the repository, but it's literally the best way of describing what is in this repository, which is CI CD resources. Uh, no YAML sums up my feelings pretty perfectly about YAML, but using data markup languages as pseudo parameters cause extremes confusing. Oh, geez. I opened that and my eyes hurt. I will look at that later. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think we just call it what it is. Pulumi CICD. Yeah, it's fine. All right, feature repositories added Pulumi CICD. Hey, Atoda, could you like let me sit? <coughs> <clears throat> or could somebody in chat let me sit? I'd appreciate it. Oh, you, I hate you so much. Yeah, man. It's going to be every Wednesday, Debbie. Every Wednesday. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. That's okay. It's okay. I'm going to make a toe to spend his points. It'll, yeah, I've got seven minutes. It's a, it has a cool down of an hour. I have to stand for an hour. <laughs> you got it, man. Just take it, take it slowly. Take it slowly. Like I said, you're also welcome, welcome to ask in the Nick's Trinity. So if you go into our discord and anybody else in chat, if you guys are interested in Nick's, there's a whole channel dedicated to this as well as like a, like if you have like a specific problem that you'd like really like to know more about, you can also ask in the Nick's Trinity help section. But if you ask in this channel as well, normally people can help you too. So Nick's has a very large learning curve. Wait, what was that? DLC teardown. Whoa, this is new. We're experimenting with new DLC implementation. This job did not incur credits during DLC teardown phase. DLC teardown does not block work show progress. Oh, that's pretty cool. Wow. All right. All right, Circle CI. Just trying to impress me. They were like, ah, we heard you were talking, talking shit, so we're going to give you some cool stuff to shut you up. <laughs> I like Cloud Posse's take on configuration over code uh, for over code for IAC, but even then they stuffed a ton of complexities in Atmos. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, listen. I think if you're gonna write with code for automation, then you should focus on simplicity and simple problem solving, right? Like again, making off the shelf. Like for me, I really focus on making Pulumi components. Pulumi has this concept of uh, components. If you guys don't know chat and they're basically like react components in the sense that it is its own resource that has child resources in it right and the parent of those resources is the component that you create so for example in javascript you create a class called my component right with like a super and then inside of that you add your bucket with like parent set to that 
right? And so what happens then is, is you create a resource in Pulumi called my component and inside of it, it creates buckets or whatever else you need. And I think that like, this is as far as, <coughs> excuse me, this is as far as logical abstraction that you need. Like, I don't think you need to go too much beyond this. You know, if you need more components, just create more components next to it. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it needs to be that crazy. So um i think if you keep it simple like that just have a bunch of classes you know think reasonable high reasonability well typed you know i think it can be really good pulumi ci cd okay cool um this looks good chat so yeah we've got our new pulumi automation for ci cd resources pulumi ci cd devops pulumi great all right so let's merge this so there's going to be a couple thing that's things that's going to happen here that i'm actually pretty excited about the first one is that it's going to create a new repository for us. And I'm always excited about new repositories. Uh, the second thing is that we're actually going to be able to use another thing that we built chat called build configs. And the reason why we're going to be able to use build configs is I recently added support for Pulumi automation in go. So if you guys don't recall, I recently streamed and we did, uh, we built something in rust called uh, build configs. Um, and the main concept behind build configs is, is that it's a CLI tool that gives you configuration, uh, uh, basically a configuration DSL or domain specific language. And the whole point of this configuration is, is that you give it like the name, the language, right? And the template. And so for example, uh, I'm creating an Alta 4 Pulumi GitHub uh, configuration uh, it's written in TypeScript and it's a, it's a Pulumi repository. And so what happens is, is build configs then generates all the templates we need to, uh, you know, for circle CI, for Docker file, for anything else. Um, so that I don't have to make those templates again myself. Um, and so I'm excited to give that another shot because, uh, I just added support, as I said, for, yeah, here it is for, um, go. <clears throat> yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you guys in a second what it actually looks like once it's, once it's done. Uh, in infra to properly develop components, test them and maintain it is a full-time job in and of itself. Whether Pulumi or Terraform ensuring you've studied every option of the service and tested it, providing the API for it. That's, uh, and that's only one service in your project. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you start creating that warehouse, right. And supporting that warehouse. I think, I think it also is about, uh, no hat. See, I think it's about getting good at, you know, r running that warehouse, right? Like you start noticing like, okay, we can automate this, make this easier, you know, we could do this, make this easier, um, and being good at that, you know, making processes for your warehouse better. Uh, cool. Our services at work use a combination of Plumi automation and GitHub templates to create services with a mode trigger. Oh, nice. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, we, we do something similar. Um, we, so at circle CI or I'm sorry, circle CI, geez, uh, at hippo, um, we have what's called service directory. And that basically is like our main, like everything we have is based off of configuration, even to the services. Uh, and so what you do at Hippo is you say like, okay, I want a new service. I'm going to configure it. And then when you configure it, we generate all of our Terraform off of that. So we don't actually write Terraform normally. Uh, we just generate Terraform code whenever we add to this configuration and then the repositories get auto generated. And so basically what happens is, is you go to service directory. And again, I talk about this in my front end master's course, by the way. Um, so again, be sure to check that out whenever that is eventually released. <laughs> I'm hoping it's soon. I mean, again, I'm, I'm very excited for it. I think they're, they're going to do some cool stuff. Um, and I think it was a really good course as well. Um, but yeah, when it is out, there it is. Pulumi CI CD. Bam. Um, when it is out, I, I talk about this concept of like a centralized configuration and then basically everything updating from that and, and actually how we do that at Hippo or, you know, at scale. Yes. Thank you. Oh, 
You gotta move a boy though. No oh, man. You gonna really make me do this? Huh? I'll let him sleep for a little bit longer. I feel bad. He's being he's being cute. <clears throat> okay, so we have our new repository. Now here's what I want to do is I want to show you the power of build configs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the branch name. I'm going to copy the branch name. So I'm going to WT add dash B. Oh wait, where am I? Yeah. WT add dash B. Bam, bam. Right. So I'm going to create a new working tree in my new repository. Now, if you look here, completely blank repository chat. All right. Nothing is here. Now, Normally, when I start writing code, for example, right, I will have to create a Docker file, uh, create Pulumi configuration files so that Pulumi is set up properly, uh, create a Circle CI file so that this can run in CI properly, right? Like all of these things that just kind of have to be boilerplate set up every time, right? Or what I can do is, is I can use the tool we created or I created called build configs. And again, how we use it, and I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna grab an example here. Let's grab, um, I think it was Pulumi VPN. Yeah, Pulumi VPN. So we'll grab this and we're gonna create a new configuration for this. So we're going to go back to our repository we just created, CICD. We're going to create a new file. We're going to call it build.json. Right? So this is a build file that I have I have like said must exist in the repository and it must have these or similar configuration options to do what we want, okay? So first off, what we're going to do is, is we're going to get rid of the Docker file stuff. We don't need to change any of that. And we're going to look at the first uh, real one we need, which is environments, right? So when we talk about like CI, CD, we, we might consider like, what do we need to deploy to? Are we deploying to dev? Are we deploying to prod? Are we deploying to multiple environments maybe? Um, and that's what this first configuration block does, right? It basically says, okay, well, we are going to generate CI code for you. What environments do you need to deploy to? And so in this case, where our environments match our stacks because this is Pulumi, right? So it could be stacks, but it's environments because that's what we call them. And in this case, we're going to only deploy prod because we call prod our like global infrastructure right things that we kind of uh use everywhere um the name of this is going to be called pulumi ci cd right and the language is in go so there's a few things we already know about this repository from this configuration we know that it it deploys to multiple environments or at least one in this case prod we know that it's written in go we know the name of it and we know that it's a pulumi repository as well right these four facts these four simple facts are enough for me to now be able to say, all right, well, let's generate uh, from that. So I'm going to say build configs right here. Let me find it. Next run. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Next run. Now I'm using Nix to run it and it's basically going to build it and then run the binary for me. So I'm going to hit enter. I guess you get to see a little bit of Nick's chat. <laughs> Needed water. <clears throat> If you don't have time, it's okay. But I'm curious about that circle CI runner command I saw. How do runners work? Uh, you mean like how do circle CI runners work? Because I can just send you to the docs and they have like nice little <laughs> uh, things that kind of probably would look better than me explaining it. 
Um, so this document here shows you how they work, basically. Um, this one here. And the thing to... Oh, come on, man. Seriously. It's like whenever I go back to the window, it, it like freezes for some reason. I don't get it. Anyways. Um, so if you go here... There we go. Uh, you'll see a button here, container runner, machine runner. They, they, Circle CI, for example, provides two options. And it depends on like the CI system you're using. You know what I mean? This is just Circle CI. But this is their container runner. And the one we're using right now is the machine runner. So we're using the machine runner currently. Or that's what we're setting up, at least right now. Okay. So I ran the command, chat. The command ran and I'm sitting here. Now watch what happens when I look at the directory after running the command and creating, or after generating the configuration file and running the command, right? Circle CI with a config.yaml inside of it. I have a Docker file. I have a Docker ignore. I have a git ignore. I have a just file. I have a pulumi.yaml. Um, and then the readme was already there. So let's look at some of these things that we just got out of the box. Well, we said we have a just file. So what if I do just list? Okay, well, I can actually build. I can log in if I need to. I can preview. I can pull. I can push. Basically, everything I need to start working with Pulumi is here. Okay, cool. Well, what about Pulumi itself? Okay, well, Pulumi is set up with Pulumi CI CD. Okay, that's the name. And then look at this. Even it says, okay, the runtime is Go. The binary is Pulumi CI CD. Right? So out of the box because we said these four truths about this repository which is that the environments it deploys to the language it's written in the name of it and the template right we got a just file with everything we need to build and use and run pulumi right we got a pulumi file itself with the runtime set to go and the binary set to what it needs to be um we also got a Docker file. Look at this. We got a Docker file generated with the Golang image, right? With the ability to build our uh, build our uh, automation <clears throat> automation as well as take that built binary, put it into a uh, final build stage, and then install things like Doppler and Pulumi and basically everything we need to run things, right? But not only that, and here's like, here's where it is. Again, it's really cool is we also got a circle CI file, right? So I am also able to push this code and immediately have pipelines for it, right? Because we have a template for it and we know what the language is. We know what kind of template and what we run and we've standardized all of this. So in this case, we're simply just saying, hey, let's generate a circle CI template with everything it needs, right? And it's you'll see it's using just. And if we go to here, we say just list, we should see build. There it is, build. It's a it's an available command already there because we've standardized all of this. So again, that's super nice because now all I have to do is just start making my actual automation. You know what I mean? I don't have to worry about, oh, well, now I need to go out and set up some things or whatever. It, you know, it just works. Um, yeah, it's very nice. It's very nice. We use this at Hippo. We call it Hippo Build at Hippo, but it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, and if you think about like, okay, now what I want to do is I want to change something, right? Say, for example, no hot seat, you're like, all right, well, I want to move, you know, I want to move to GitHub actions. And I want to generate a GitHub Actions file, right? Well, then you can make that generate command, maybe even remove Circle CI directories if it exists, right? And then generate a replacement GitHub Actions uh, with the code that you want. You know what I mean? Uh, I see that you use environment variables in those files. How do you use it globally, locally per project? Uh, locally per project, yeah. Uh, locally per project yeah every project has its own environment variables its own authentication and stuff to keep it safe uh and we use doppler for like secrets and whatnot so um now i actually already have um 
automation in place that kind of is what I need already. Um, and so I can, I can really kind of copy it honestly, and just kind of like, you know, patch it together to make what I need. Um, so I'm going to do that. So we're going to create a new directory and we're going to call it command. And then inside of this directory, we're going to call it uh, another directory, Alta for LLC, uh, Pulumi CI CD. And it, you might be like, well, why are you basically making another directory? That's, you know, the same as the thing that you're building. That's because when we build, we've standardized how we build with this go build command dot, dot, dot. And so what happens is this builds everything, every directory and command. It basically uses the name of the directory as the output binary. Um, and so for example, if I was like, all right, I want to add another Alta for LLC, I don't know, Pulumi CI CD new. Maybe I wanted to like have two different automations. It built both basically for me. So it's because we've standardized it to do it this way, essentially. So then we're going to create a main.go inside of that. We'll go to the root, go to the main.go. I'm just going to copy all of this. Now, I don't need Azure at the moment. We're, we're not going to keep the Azure stuff. So we're going to get rid of the Azure stuff entirely. And we're just going to keep the AWS stuff. Um, so we don't need provider that now we do want provider AWS. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new directory internal and then a new directory inside of this called provider AWS. And this is because this is going to be everything related to AWS. Okay. So now if we do provider AWS, we should be able to go to entry point and we can just basically use this same entry point dot go <clears throat> cool we'll copy this and for right now that's basically all we need we're not going to keep any of this stuff we'll just save this and then we'll close that go back to main now this isn't pulumi network this is pulumi ci cd right that's like that we just do go mod in it. Uh, Alta for LLC, Pulumi CI CD, go mod tidy. And there you go. Now it's going to grab the modules that we need. And we've just set up our go thing. All right, Coderman, have a good night. Thank you for hanging out, buddy. We'll see you soon. I'm probably going to be calling it here shortly myself. All right, what username? Have a good one, buddy. Thank you for hanging out. What did the command look like that you used to generate that originally? Um, so it looks like this: build configs generate. That's it. Everything else is kind of like auto configured underneath the hood. So like the path to the file is standardized. So it's just if it's in if it's build.json in the root directory, we can find it. Otherwise, you do like build configs. <coughs> Excuse me config and then like my config.json right like you can do things like that <clears throat> um okay cool so we are we're moving on here chat um so what do we have now well we have our entry point set up um i don't know why it's saying that it can't import provider aws internal provider aws entry point provider aws yeah this should be working I'm not entirely sure what it means by this. Oh, this probably needs to be github.com alt F4 LLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this isn't right. Um, Pulumi CI CD internal provider AWS. That should work. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. Awesome. Okay. So what do we want to make now that we've got our automation somewhat set up? We kind of need to ask ourselves, what resources do we want to make inside of CI CD? Now we said we're going to make stuff in AWS, which that's great. But like, what exactly do we want to create in AWS? And I would say the first thing we probably want to do is circle CI uh, machine runners, 
right i think that's i think that's literally what we want to create um because again in the future there's a solid chance we're going to have github action machine runners right and this will be whatever that configuration is so let's split this and let's kind of talk a little bit about like what exactly a circle ci machine runners thingy should or could look like um i think there's a few problems we want to solve here if we talk about like you know what exactly we want to have out of the box and i would say um we should be able to uh create by resource class uh for um executors or executor types right and so what this means is is like i want to be able to run a alta 4 llc machine small right and i should be able to create a alta 4 machine runners resource right and this is literally what i'm talking about this is a resource we're going to create a, a circle ci machine runners resource and in it we should be able to create by the resource uh, class we should be able to create um auto scaling group i think is probably what we want to do uh to uh predefined um value um and i think for right now for right now uh no need to implement auto scaling itself Right. Like I, I, I think like what we just want to do is, is we, we want to put them in a group so that we can easily be like, all right, now I want 20. Okay. Now I want 30. You know what I mean? Um, and we could just change a value. So I think, I think putting it into an auto scaling group with a predefined value is important. Um, I think we're also going to need to be able to create, um, with, uh, cloud, uh, what is it called? No, uh, user data uh for injecting uh resource class configuration right and so the idea here is is that um when we create a alta 4 llc machine small uh we need to inject uh the uh token basically uh for it um and so when we create by resource class we're also going to need to make sure that we require the user data for that uh resource class so that'll be important as well and then i guess the last one which we're, we know we can already do which is we create with uh packer uh automated uh ami image that uses standardized paths right and so what we mean by this is is like um generating circle ci configuration in predetermined path like stuff like that basically and the user already being there um so let's do this really quickly because i'm kind of curious if i kind of wanted to see like well i'm not even going to use json here I'm really not. I just kind of want to see what the structure would kind of look like. Right. And I guess like if I really wanted to, I could say TypeScript instead. Um, and just be like class, uh, my component. I think that's how that works. Right. Um, actually, you know what? No, let's do, let's do go. My bad. We want to do it in go. So we're going to say struct my component no sorry type my component struct right and then we'll say that the parameters we want to give to my component are resource class right um and maybe this will be like uh i guess a string for now it could just be a string whatever uh and then uh maybe count right because we want to be able to have a auto scaling group with a predefined value so how many 
runners do I want, right? So we're solving two questions, right? What resource class for the executor and then the count. Now, actually what's kind of interesting is, is if we create by the resource class, that gives it its name, but its name will be in its user data. So I think what we mean by resource class is actually instance type. Yeah, I think we actually mean instance type here. So instance type, right? Because then we can say like, okay, we want this to be, uh, you know, T3A small. This would say, all right, we want, you know, uh, three of them. Um, and then I guess we say user. So actually here's, what's kind of interesting. Um, if we quickly go to, uh, where automation cloud image. All right. Yeah. Let's, I want to grab this really quickly because we actually need this in the CICD part. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to just move this. I'm going to put this right here. And the reason why I want to do that is, is because this is YAML, meaning I could technically turn this into a structure and then parse it into YAML if I wanted to. So I could say like, all right, not only are we going to have a type struct for my component, but then we'll say my component uh, runner config struct, for example, right? And then I could literally just tell it that I want this to be a my component runner config, right? And so what that means is, is that I could say like, all right, well, I only need an auth token and a runner name. So we'll say, okay, auth token string runner name string, right? And now these, you know, this is a secret. This is a, uh, you know, dynamic value maybe, or something else dynamic or static, whatever static value. Right. And now we've made it so that it's statically typed so that we can just auto generate this template with the things needed in it. And now we've got our instance type, our config and our count, which solve the problem of the size of the instance we want to create, how many of them we want to create and this re uh, respective resource class for the user yes. data. Right. Um, and then the AMI will always be the same, right? This is standardized. Every, all of these will be created with the same AMI. So we don't have to worry about, uh, this at all when we do it. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty, I like the, I like the, uh, the standardization around that. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So I guess what we could say is, is we could say like, uh, alt F4. I don't know if I do the alt F4 LLC thing in the go ones. Do I, uh, Kubernetes, Pulumi Kubernetes internal AWS. I think I do actually. No, I just do AWS. Yeah. Yeah. So I just prefix it with the uh, provider name. So. In this case, oh geez, where'd my, there it is. So in this case, we'd probably do something like, not alt F4, but circle CI machine runner. Because they also have container runners that we might have as a thing in the future. Uh, container runner config, or, I mean, honestly, actually, you know what chat, we don't even need to do this. My bad. We don't need this. We could just do this, right? Make all of these things required. So then we make auth token runner name and get rid of config. And this is, this is basically our circle CI 
or circle CI, I guess we could do it like that. Uh, machine runner. Uh, our, our circle CI machine runner structure. And so again, what this would mean is, is that when we create a series of machine runners, right? We could say, all right, this is the auth token for it. This is the account, how many we want. This is the instance type, and this is the runner name. I guess we could say runners because technically, hmm, either that or we can abstract away the count, but it would still, if we abstracted away the count, then it wouldn't need to be in an auto scaling group. We would just have to do a for loop basically. So it does kind of beg the question, would we rather have it be in an auto scaling group or would we rather literally just do it with a four, uh, a four, you know what I mean? Like a for loop. Hmm. The auto scaling group would handle the instances better. A for loop. If we just like removed, you know, 10 or 15 instances, we don't really have much control over which one of those instances go and which one of those stay. Whereas the auto scaling group, we don't really have much control over that either per se, but it might handle it a little better, you know? So maybe that's, I don't know. That's kind of something to think about. Looking forward. Uh, what are your plans to uh, match count to active running jobs at the moment? Nothing, right? Like that, that's why, you know, the auto scaling group could be nice at hippo. We solve for this. We basically, have a lambda that curls an endpoint in circle CI to check for the active jobs. And then it updates the auto scaling group uh, or the count basically to that, you know, desired amount. Um, and I can like, we can implement that. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm just, I'm just thinking of like, you know, I like, I like what we're doing. Like, I like the fact that, you know, again, we can basically say like, all right, I want a circle CI machine runner, an auth token, an instance type and a runner name. Bam. Like, like this gives me an instance with circle CI, you know, machine runner agent running inside it or inside of it with the auth token, you know, and everything that it needs. Like, perfect. Awesome. You know, um, but again, I know that you don't just normally need one. And I know at some point we might also want to scale these. Um, thank you for the follows guys. I appreciate it. Um, and in that case, like, do we want to make it so that this is actually like, you know, again, a auto scaling group. And if that's the case, do we, for now, not even want to worry about count and just set it to something manual. And then later on hook in the auto scaling feature for circle CI, you know what I mean? Um, it's kind of the question yeah because we don't like right now we only need we only literally need one <laughs> like we don't need to do an auto scaling group or any of that kind of stuff like if you were to say like what's our mvp our mvp right now is to literally just make one instance <laughs> that's it um uh we don't we really don't need anything else we, we just want to make an instance that's uh accessible via our vpn but is still behind our firewall entirely and has no public address. So like, this is going to be a completely private instance. So I think in that case, you know what, it might make more sense to, um, what's it called now? Here's another thing too, we could do, and this will be the last thing I, I kind of like throw your guys this way before I, before I head out actually is, is we could also say like circle CI machine, um, Go, Go doesn't really do great with like enums, unfortunately. Um, you can do them, but it's like kind of weird. But like what we could do if we wanted is we could set up like an enum, I guess. How do you, I don't even know how you do enums in it, but we could basically say like, okay, instead of providing the instance type and the runner name, we actually abstract both of those away and we just say resource class, right? And this could be like, you know, uh, and this might even be a better scenario because then if we say like machine small, then we could say, all right, if the circle CI machine runner is set to machine small. Yeah. I think you're right on that, Juno. 
uh or you know um but yeah i i think um sorry didn't mean to say your name wrong i think if we did this then these can be standardized right so we say like okay i want a circle ci machine runner with the resource class machine small right and when we do that we know that when we provide machine small we get you know a two gig uh two cpu you know uh two gigabyte ram server right um and then that's all standardized i actually like that better right it's simpler we just give it the auth token there's nothing else that we need to do um and then if we need multiple maybe we yeah we make some more abstractions or something i don't know I like this though, chat. I like this a lot. This is, yeah, this looks really good. I know it's the, it's so simple, but yeah, I really like this. And now like if I wanted to, I can even just copy this and now we're going to create a new thing. So we'll say internal provider AWS. Um, and I think what we'll do is, is we'll say file circle CI machine runner.go I just didn't know if I I guess I used underscores so maybe we'll do that to keep with that circle ci machine runner.go circle ci machine runner.go and we're just gonna steal a couple things from this we need to register a new component so we're gonna say package provider aws thank you and we're just going to copy the function or the first few lines of the function from the aws vpn one and instead of this being aws vpn it's gonna be new circle ci machine runner it's literally gonna be right the thing that we we said um and so then we want to do circle ci machine runner as a structure so we're going to copy this really quickly get rid of this Again, another nice thing about documenting things is, is you can even like write some pseudocode for yourself that you can easily just copy later. And there, I already have this here. AWS VPN. Now there is something else we need for this, which is, yeah, we need this structure technically. So this needs to be this. And then this needs to be uh, ops. There we go. And then this needs to be circle CI machine runner. There we go. So to re-import Pulumi, do that. And then new new circle ci machine runner ops uh new new circle ci machine runner ops resource ops resource option and then we want to return a circle ci machine runner right because it's going to be a pulumi resource and then this will be a circle ci machine runner component circle ci machine runner ops name so we hmm i think technically we'd probably want to do resource class here i don't think we would give the name of it not the resource class you know what i'm saying so yeah i think resource class is what we want here this will be circle ci machine runner and there we go and so now if we do return component bam we now have a oh we now have a wired up component that we can start putting things that we actually need into it um and so like for example if we start just looking at like what we have in the vpn uh automation we have like a security group um we have an instance and so we can actually take both of these. I'll start with the security group. I'll go here. 
paste this in, right? And so this will be uh, security group name, circle CI machine runner dash percent S. And then again, we said that this would be the resource class. So that'll be that. Uh, we can put Alt F4 LLC in front of it because eh, we don't need to. Um, EC2. We don't want AWS native. We want AWS, I think, actually, I don't think we want. Yeah, we want the version 5. So we're going to import V5. Bam. Okay. Now, egress can stay what it is, but ingress needs to not be an IP address, but we actually need to to do look up VPN security group. And the reason for that is, is because we want to be able to within the VPN access these instances if we need to like SSH into them or anything like that. So we will have to look up the VPN security group ID um, so that we know uh, you know, uh, we are giving access to the VPN basically for uh, debugging or anything like that. And that's basically something we're going to do across all the infrastructure. The VPN security group gets added to everything as an ingress so that if we need to access it internally without having to make it public, we can do that. Um, but all right, guys, check it out. I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been going for three hours. So I think, I think, I think now's a good time to call it. It's also 10 o'clock. So I want to go eat food and chill out. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if anything, I have given you guys a good introduction into, uh, what we're trying to do, right? Um, we want to, again, do a lot of really cool things. We want to be able to run the automation I showed you and we want to be able to run it, you know, internally in our network and run it with, you know, all these, like all this different, like we want to be able to do these things very easily. Um, and so again, getting, you know, our machine runners automated and set up so that if we, you know, if we need to scale out really easily, if say for a scenario that we end up, you know, running like five different tests at once and we're like, oh man, if we didn't have automation around that, I couldn't just easily on stream go over and be like, oh, let's just kick that up to three really quickly. You know what I mean? So again, it's, it's really, really powerful to be able to think ahead and be like, okay, what are we going to need to automate? We're going to need to change. Right. And again, that's really where this list that I was showing you guys comes into play. These are the concerns at Alta four we have. Right. And there's a couple that are new that we're going to be doing like database and messaging, right? Where we are actually going to start using RDS um, and we're going to lean on more cloud services for even Redis and, and uh, Dynamo, right? And so everything, all of that's going to go into database. And we said we want to build an event bus, right? Well, we need to be able to have rules and everything set up so that we can use that event bus. And so messaging is going to be the automation for that. So, you know, if you're curious about like what we create in Alta 4, this is really it. These are all the main, you know, automation repositories that we care about. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Seriously, thank you so much. Again, if you are new to the channel, be sure to check out that little blurb right there. Basically, we are a variety channel hosted by myself, as well as my good friend, Atota. Not really too sure why we got that three times. Um, yeah, dude, of course, of course, Calface and everybody who's hanging here. Thank you. I appreciate it. The bot might spam three times. If it does, I apologize. Um, if you are new to the channel again, be sure to check that out. Also be sure to check out our discord. Yep. At least it's, yeah, it's doing it three times. Something just happened. Twitch just did something. Uh, but anyways, yeah, be sure to check out our discord. Uh, also be sure to check out our YouTube. Uh, a lot of the stuff I go over today, I went over today as well as like we've gone over in the past, um, either will be on the main YouTube. So like I said, I have a few videos up there right now. I'm working on some others, whether it be Nick's or again, the content I've talked to you guys today about with like the automation repositories and stuff. Um, be sure to sub to this, uh, this, uh, YouTube channel. This is the one where we do all of our like, curated stuff. Um, and then if you're also wanting to catch any of our VODs or anything like that, you can check out the archives. Um, and again, we are working on making so that the archives are completely automated. Um, and there should be a bunch of new art VODs going on that. So be sure to subscribe to that too. Outside of that again, and the discord and the YouTube, be sure to check out the social media. Uh, we are on Twitter. Um, I use it you know, every so often I'm trying to get better at it, but yeah, be sure to check out that too. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I don't really know if there's any, I don't know if I know anybody live right now. 
that we could raid. I, I I think I honestly might just... Oh, you know what? The It of Alan's live. Let's go raid him. Let's go raid the It of Alan. Let's go say hi to him. Um, all right, guys. So let's go raid Alan really quickly. Guys, have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Like I said, this is going to be a new schedule going forward. We're going to be streaming Monday mornings, Wednesday evenings, Thursday evenings, Friday mornings, and Saturday mornings. So I hope to see you uh, any of you know any of the days of the week that we're streaming. Appreciate you guys. Let's go say hi to Alan. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. Um, and yeah, um, I'll, I'll have a good or uh, have a good one. All right, guys. See ya.